Well, the Nifty and the Sensex post minor gains but ended in the green for the third straight week. The banks outperformed with the Nifty Bank posting its biggest weekly gain of 2024. Private banks gained the most. Hello and welcome to the Editor's Roundtable. Over the next 30 minutes, we decode the week's market action and put the spotlight continuing trend of stake sales in um, multinational companies. I'm Sonia Shanoi with me, Surbhi Upadhyay and Nimesha. Also joining me on the show today is Mahesh Patil, the CIO at Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC. Mahesh, thank you so much for being with us on the yeah. show. Well, you know, it has been a very volatile uh, last couple of days, but give and take everything, this market after a big run last week is just consolidating, buying time around these record high levels. So not such a bad outcome at all. Not such a bad outcome. In fact, you know, d despite a truncated week, it looks so long, right? I mean, <laughs> we feel like I mean, every day there are so many block deals, there are so many stake sales happening. Reporting every day to come and talk about this block, that block, <laughs> and I, I'm sure you know uh, Manish uh, is equally busy yeah. participating in most of the blocks for the, of this week as well. But again, you know, looks like there is more of churn happening within sectors as well. This week belong to the private banks, a bit of bit of surge in the private bank stocks. A lot of the laggards of of the last few weeks have seen a bit of bounce back as well, and a bit of profit booking in metals in some of those sectors. So, looks like this momentum is going to continue purely on back of what uh, Mayesh and the team uh, domestic mutual funds are doing. They're just buying out uh, every promoter and every MNC. So I think that's that's been that's going no, to be the I, trend, I guess. No, absolutely, uh, Nimesh has had a really busy week because every oh, day he has at least I think six, seven block trades yeah. to talk talk about to tell us who could be potential buyers and what's happening. But uh, Mahesh, thank you so much for uh, dropping into our uh, studios. It's great to have you here. It's like finally pausing for some breath, right? After the roller coaster run up to the elections, the announcement, digesting what has happened, yeah. and now I guess just anticipation, waiting for the next event, and, and that's the budget. How have you sort of, you know, let it all sink in? Yeah, no, so it's been a kind of a volatile week in that sense. I mean, the budget day, I mean, the election day was the, yeah. the best one. I think <laughs> the idea is to stay cool, right? Because we've seen that everything really bounced back to this level. So, again, uh, we can't react as much uh, being a large uh, fund house. I mean, you have to be positioned in stocks or sectors where you think, okay, uh, which will withstand any kind of volatility. Obviously, they'll follow the market, but with less. So, I think uh, in this kind of a market where uh, we're seeing a lot of pockets where there is a lot of exuberance which is there because of the large liquidity which is coming in. I mean, idea is to have to focus on better quality names, right? So you want to not get carried away, okay, because of price action and momentum, okay, which is happening in a few pockets. But I think structurally the market is still in, in, in good shape. I think we've seen after the elections, policy continues, Shin is there. Uh, there should be steady growth. Obviously, uh, the markets have rallied quite a bit, so there could be some consolidation. But I think this is a time where we see some amount of sector rotation, I think. I mean, the big winners of last year, right, which has been some of the cyclicals, the, the industrials, the capital goods sector, or the PSUs for that matter. I think you could see some rotation coming through because it was more investment-led. I think post-election, I think you'll see the budget probably whether the lean is more towards trying to stimulate consumption. Yeah. Okay, right. That has still been lagging. If you look at the economy, that is still well below the pre-COVID trend. Okay. And if that's the section of the economy also which comes, then we'll see some of these talks related to that with his consumer discretionary, consumer staple, that could see some interest coming in. In fact, you know, we had a very interesting discussion with one of our consumer durable companies a couple of days ago and they said that there is so much traction now coming in, especially from some of these pockets like real estate, infrastructure, etc. Right. And now the capex that they've invested in, now they're seeing the fruits of that. Yes. But apart from that, the other sector I wanted to ask you about was IT because this week IT was back in focus, you know, with Accenture giving out their guidance and numbers, etc. Uh, but your thoughts overall, as we head into the earnings season as well, how are you positioned on the IT names? So, IT sector, uh, we are kind of a neutral-ish because it's a sector which looks to have bottomed out uh, in terms of at least its earnings trajectory, right? I think last two quarters or three quarters, we have seen some down downgrades uh, in the IT sector. I think from here on, I think the uh, downgrade cycle is, uh, looks like behind us, right? Mm. So, uh, most of the negatives are pricing and we are seeing some early shoots in terms of the uh, new orders, if you look at it, right, especially the big transformational projects, I think those orders are coming in, but they are slow to execute. Uh, discretionary spend is still weak, but uh, we are seeing from the BFSI sector, like globally, uh, things are looking to a bottomed out. So this is a sector, I think, I think where if you are trying to be counter-cyclical and trying to take a contra call, uh, it could be a good sector to look at slowly because I think in a market correction, if at all, then this sector should out outperform because mm. uh, it's under-owned. Again, a lot of FIs, if you look at it, is probably the most under-owned sector in that sense. But it's not going to be, again, a very high growth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the growth will still be muted. Uh, I think as we move into the next two quarters, you'll get more visibility. 
and that's where I think one can build uh, over, uh, in, in this uh, in this space. I think structurally, we think that IT spends are going to only increase, right? The way things are happening, I think there's not going to be any kind of a slowdown over there. Currently, uh, companies are just waiting and watching over there. So it's a good cycle to accumulate, I would say, at, at this point sure, in time. Sure, you know, absolutely. I, mean, I, I guess we haven't seen any company come out with a decidedly uh, upbeat commentary, but at the same time, no one's saying it's getting worse. They're saying yes. that, you know, incrementally, uh, it should get better from here on. We caught up with Mohit Joshi. I mean, last yeah. Friday we were speaking with him at the Mahindra Investor Day, and he said the same thing that the environment is definitely better than where it was a couple of months back. So right. the optimism is on. Just very quickly before we move on, I thought I'll put some numbers and stats for this week on uh, on the table as well. So what has the market done? Consolidation means the Nifty is virtually flat, absolutely, even nearly unchanged, 0.1, 0.2% kind of a move on the index. Uh, it's been a better week for the broader market. The mid-cap index is up about half a percent. The small-cap index is up a little over 1%. But the big story, the big trade of the week has been the revival in private banks. Uh, you know, the Bank Nifty itself has uh, done very well. It's up almost 4%. The private bank index is up 3%. And PSUs, they've kind of fallen off the radar a little bit this week. Some profit taking coming in. In the overall PSU ba basket and in PSU banks, which is why the PSU bank tally for the week is actually a negative 1.2%. Now, what has triggered the interest? It's very simple. Bank stocks follow the money and the money... The foreign money has started showing up this week. Uh, so if you look at, uh, you know, the, the weekly inflows, we did have a couple of positive days. And more importantly, for the month of June, the net number has turned positive uh, from the FPI fraternity. So what is the number? Uh, the June net inflow number is now about 11,000 crores. Now, mind you, these are final depository numbers, not provisional numbers. And they also take into account whatever's coming in through these blocks. But for whatever it's worth, you've got 11,000 crores of FPI inflow coming in, contrasted with about a 26,000 crore outflow in the prior month. So FPI numbers have come in. Now, is this going to be a building trend, lasting trend? This is the big, big question. And we'll ask Mahesh that in just a moment. Uh, so where was the profit taking? It was quite evident in the auto space. One of the best performing parts of the market. So stocks like Mahindra and Mahindra, Maruti, I mean, even Hero, Moto, Bajaj, all of them lost a little bit of ground today, uh, you know, today and over the last three or four sessions. The other space, as I mentioned, was PSUs. And interestingly, FMCG, though there is this anticipation of, uh, you know, boosting consumption at the bottom of the pyramid, it's not really showing up in FMCG stocks. It was there on the day of the result day uh, when we got the election verdict. But since then, the market's kind of moved on because of continuity, etc. And the focus has come back to some of these CapEx stories. The short point is this week, the FMCG index was an underperformer. Now, IT, we've discussed, IT is beginning to see a lot of tactical buying. Also, mind you, the rupee was weakening throughout this week. In fact, it hit a fresh all-time low on Thursday. So that's something to keep in mind as well. IT is definitely getting in the buying. Now, the big events are over. Elections done, the Fed meeting is done, the RBI meeting is done. Going forward, it's going to be all about the budget and all of the, a lot of these pre-consultation meetings that are happening. And also, when we come back on Monday, remember, the GST meeting would be over and done. And the anticipation of that meeting kept some sectors, like fertilizers, for instance, very excited through the course of this week. So I guess it's going to be more of this tax talk and what's going to happen in the budget. Will some sector get us off? Some of this chatter perhaps is going to keep the market excited. Oh, absolutely. Mahesh, what's your, your call? Because you spoke about consumption as a theme. Uh, do you expect uh, anything from uh, the budget uh, for, for a revival of, or some sort of boost for the consumption sector stocks? Yeah, so I think, again, uh, consumption is not only in, in the budget itself. I think it's also about how the monsoons, because rural uh, is, again, a large, if you look at large population over, over there, and that has not done as well, right, if you look at last year. And if, if monsoon is also good, I think then that's the real demand side, okay, the stimulus, okay, which is much more sustainable. But I think there will be something at least... Uh, 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 to, I mean, uh, to make feel good, especially on the, on the rural side, there could be some increase in the uh, allocations, okay, which are given to the uh, to the farmers, right? Uh, we are seeing also some uh, 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 measures been taken to boost housing because while housing, we have seen the premium housing has done well. I think the affordable housing has still not seen that kind of a boost. So those are the areas, okay, where uh, you could see uh, some uh, uh, because this year the budget. There is some uh, extra provision which is there from the RBI dividend, right? There's a, yeah. uh, almost 1 lakh rupees more than what it was last year. And that's where there'll be some room for the, uh, for the, for the finance minister okay, to see how it really deploys that. Correct. So I think, uh, yeah, to given that, but again, uh, uh, one has, it has to be supplemented also okay, by uh, good monsoon because uh, just trying to uh, give some donor will not be good enough. But okay. Mahesh, so, you know, just quick follow up on that point. What, in your mind, is the best way to play uh, bottom of the pyramid consumption? Would it be FMCG? Would it be, uh, you know, some of these housing finance companies? 
something else or maybe comes like a QSR because they, they or have maybe QSRs exactly the last one yeah. and a half year. Yeah, so I think, uh, again, it's not only the bottom of the pyramid, also it's in the middle, right? If you look at it, na, even that uh, uh, segment of the uh, population has also been impacted over there. So I think the better way to play that is uh, through, uh, say, consumer discretionary, some of the consum consumer durables, right? Okay. okay, that's also because they're also getting aspirational, yeah. right? And again, uh, while a uh, lot of retail credit is also coming in and helping that, but it's also a feel-good factor, right, when you spend on these aspirational stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an area, okay, consumer discretionary, whether it is the QSR space, whether it is the retailing sector, the consumer durable sector. I mean, these are the sectors where uh, you could see a kind of a market shift. I mean, consumer staples, only you will see that much increase over there, right? Sure. Beyond a point, I think that's not something which is aspirational. So, so that, that's an area where I think which has clearly lagged behind uh, in the last one year, okay, which structurally also bodes well, right? Because as India, as the per capita income goes up, naturally you will see a much uh, bigger growth uh, over the next, next many years. But temporarily, I think if this boost comes in, okay, you could see a better takeoff in some of these categories. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have some questions for you on individual sectors as well. But before that, Nimesh, what are you tracking today? Well, Sonia, you know, deals, 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 and deals, more, and more deals right? Deals. <laughs> this week, Sonia, 25,000 crores and counting. That was the amount of block deals which have happened. And again, this week was largely dominated by <coughs> MNCs, right? Three large MNCs have sold big chunks into the Indian, uh, Indian uh, subsidiaries. So, to start with, Indus Tower. Vodafone uh, PLC sold 18% stake in a single day and they've raised 15,000 crores by selling uh, that 18% stake. They've very clearly mentioned that they, they will use the proceeds to pay off the, uh, or to repay the lenders. They'll still be holding 3% stake in Indus Tower. That's, that's, uh, that's, that, that, that was a large block deal. The second block deal was uh, ZF Commercial. Vapco, which owns 75% in the Indian arm, they sold nearly 7.5% stake in a single day and, and have raised close to... Uh, what, uh, 2,800 crores by selling that stake in the Indian arms. So that was second large block by, by an MNC. The third was Gland Pharma. In Gland Pharma also we saw Fosun, uh, which is a Chinese uh, you know, parent company, they sold nearly 6.5%, nearly 6% stake, and they've raised close to 1,800 crores by selling that stake. So they were owning close to 57, now it'll be close to 50 or percent. So these were the three large block deals where MNCs participated for this week. But you know, that's been the trend as well. It's not the first first thing or maybe it's not the last thing as well. If you remember, I highlighted in the past as well. If you look at the la past few large block deals from MNCs, uh, Timken stands out uh, in, May, in March, May 2024. Uh, the parent com company sold uh, nearly 6.5% stake. They sold a second tranche as well very recently. So Timken was a large block. ITC was another large block where BAT sold 4% stake and they've raised uh, almost uh, uh, 17,000 crores by selling that stake. So, that was another large block. And the last was Whirlpool. In terms of size, that was the largest. 24% stake was sold by MNC in an Indian arm. And there is close to 4,000 crores. So these were some of the large uh, you know, blocks where MNCs participated. But even in general, you know, a lot of promoters, a lot of strategic investors, and PEs have sold large chunks in the last few months. Um, Mahesh, you've been, uh, you've been tracking these whole block deals. I guess as a, as a house, you all have participated as well in some of those. How do you classify between like participating in an MNC deal and uh, and like you know in a general deal where a promoter is selling out? Yeah, so I think uh, again uh, one has to look at see normally when the markets touch new highs, you see some promoters selling coming in people yeah. whether it is P investors or promoters want to encash some okay to meet the other requirements right which sure. is there. So I think in that specifically in the MNC space again we run a large MNC fund also. I think in that space, uh, normally in these companies, you don't see any liquidity because they don't do any fundraise. True. Most of the MNC companies, you hardly see them coming in with a uh, secondary, uh, uh, with the primary issuance which is there, right? So the only way to get that is uh, to some of these uh, liquidity events which come in. And some of these companies which you have talked about, I mean, they are not selling because they are negative on India yeah. or negative about the company. They have certain compulsions, okay, in their parent company, it could be high debt. Okay, and they find that, okay, probably that is with still maintaining control, right? Okay, if you can get some money and repay that debt, I think that will ease their problems, okay, in the, in the home markets. So what we look at is whether uh, the business itself or the industries where they are, where the opportunities is, is good, right? And, and whether these MNC companies are committed to the Indian operations, right? Because that is most important. It doesn't mean that once you sell down, right, uh, it should not happen that their interest in the Indian operations, okay, whether they're still committed and that's a comfort level which we now normally tend to get. And if the opportunity is good, then there will be continuous flow of technology and new products, okay, which will come into the markets as Indian markets mature. 
so so this is a good opportunity to buy some of these good quality names right uh, and and look at it and they are not so much bothered about the valuations and trying to really say that they want to which get is what the best I was getting to exactly i mean yeah. they are selling not with any malefied intent yes. i take yeah. your point but is like there selling, selling buying back their parent which is yeah. at a very very uh, perhaps, yeah, uh, they, uh, so obviously the valuations when they compare right in yeah. india people ask is this Com a top at to least that. a near term top right. because you know right. all the so called smart guys are selling right. out right no obviously the valuations in india if you compare in the home markets oh, they, they are much much higher oh, yeah. but then if you look at in the context the broader market in india itself is is expensive right so one has to look at relative valuations okay where it stands but again it's a when you buy in some of these names we don't look at say over the next one year right mm. because yeah. here to get entry some of these quality names right at even at a, not even get it never to get it cheap right if you are buying it for the longer term really long term right we structurally like if you like these companies and that's the only place okay uh, we would uh, look at uh, in some of these promoter selling because promoter selling you have to be more careful very careful yeah, yes absolutely uh, when we have many more questions for you mahesh so do stay tuned in uh, all of you we are take a going to take a short commercial break we'll continue to decode the week on the lal street on the other side stay tuned Welcome back here with us on Editors Roundtable and this week we are in conversation with Mahesh Patil of Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund Mahesh so you know at a slightly broader level i think when we talk about uh, the dip in the market or some consolidation in the market this market i don't think has seen a real dip ever since covid ended right it's been a near one way rally and dips are 2 3% very shallow right because of the sheer amount of money that you guys are pulling in look at those numbers i mean the sip numbers 20000 crores on a you know monthly basis last week's uh, last month's equity number was a very solid 26 27000 crores so is the sheer power of domestic liquidity while it's great in the larger scheme of things is it itself becoming a challenge now in the near term as a fund manager yeah so i think that the wall of money which is which is coming in okay mm -hmm. it's good also because uh, you want a steady inflow right yeah so i think sip flows are fine i think right mm -hmm. because uh, they come on a regular basis so i don't think it's it's such a challenge over here mm -hmm. obviously when there is a large deployment needs to if you if you raise a large fund for example right and suddenly you get a very large inflows over here then you have to put that money in a in a defined kind of a time frame in that case probably uh, it it can become a bit of a challenge and, and more so uh, in the small cap right in the mid cap where the liquidity is very very low obviously you get events like some of these uh, liquidity events which come in right where there are some blocks which are offering and at higher levels we see supply coming the market always there is a supply at various points which comes in right and a lot of p investors who had invested earlier i think mean, that's one uh, source of supply which is there some promoters selling in uh, some ipos which have been uh, coming in the market i think we have seen a, a good flurry especially in the small cap and mid cap space and there have been good quality companies okay which have also come uh, to the market so that also provides an opportunity to really to uh, to deploy that but but clearly it, it depends on the segment and in the small cap segment i think uh, clearly if the money flow is large at any point it it takes time and, and in that scenario i think again we will deploy so you have various way of managing that liquidity right you might park that money in index for some period of time before Correct. you find an opportunity uh, to really uh, uh, to really identify a stock okay But i have uh, yeah sorry i i just had one question uh, you know just coming back to the week and how the week has shaped up right uh, the one sector which has started to now consolidate a little bit around these levels is autos so i want to hear your thoughts there i mean this week we saw mnm &M, uh, you know uh, uh, gain quite a bit but some of the other names have started to see a little bit of correction tata motors around 990 uh, but the going has been very good for this sector so far do you think that this is just a consolidation before the next leg up or or do you think that the sector itself has matured a bit so if you look at this sector last year i mean we saw a pretty strong growth right uh, especially in two, two wheelers again after that covid wave uh, if i get two wheelers we are still not reached the peak yes. okay which we had pre covid i mean that number is still uh, we are still behind that so so in that sense okay it was a catch up game and also we saw a margin improvement right as commodity prices came up and in auto is more so i think besides the volume growth i think again that's a slightly misleading because your revenue growth has been much stronger because mm -hmm. there are a lot of premiumization which is happening right in in cars for example you see 50% of the car or more are now SUVs right which are uh, uh, which are much much pricier even in commercial vehicles also the, the trucks which have been selling a higher tonnage trucks right so to that extent i think that has that has helped but clearly i think what we are seeing is now i think the last couple of months 
there is some kind of a stored on that initial growth what we saw, especially in, in commercial vehicle, already it is showing a negative yeah. kind of a growth. Uh, in passenger vehicles also, I think that growth rate, which is around 10%, has now come down to low single digits. Right. So clearly, I think volume growth is kind of moderating down, and that's reflecting uh, in some of these stocks now, trying to consolidate. And again, the valuations there have also kind of moved off, right, because of the large outperformance over there. I think the sector will probably take some kind of a breather over here. And within that, I think uh, the volume growth will be probably more stronger in the two-wheelers, followed by four-wheelers, and then the uh, commercial vehicles. I mean, that's where our priority will be uh, in, in this sector. Uh, Mahesh, you've seen so many cycles. I want a view on uh, thematic funds. You know, that's been a trend now. A lot of MHCs are, are launching thematic funds. Uh, past has been that, you know, normally thematic funds come at the peak of that uh, exuberance. Uh, what's, what's your general take on the thematic funds? And what would be your advice to normal retail investors? So if you like now in the market, there are quite a few thematic funds, right? I mean, yeah. across sector, right? Yes. I mean, you not participate uh, in an NFO only, right? Right. And I think uh, they are, we have seen that actually, especially in the last two, three years. Uh, if you are able to play particular themes, I mean, the outperformance, what you have seen, is been huge. And like, for yeah. example, we manage an asset uh, kind of a, a, a asset allocation fund of fund, which mm. is there, right? So in that, what we do is we tend to play the equity allocation through the thematic side much more. Mm. And that has enabled you know, a large, better outperformance, provided you're able to get some of these themes. So I think it, it makes sense uh, for somebody who has a particular view on a mm. particular sector. And, and, and wants to play that, I think then thematic funds uh, make a sense. But one should not go just with the momentum, sure. right? Because normally what happens is... Which is what usually th ends up happening. Yeah, which you <laughs> see a theme play out for the last two, three years, and that's where people come in looking at yeah. the past exactly. returns. Correct. Yeah. See, a lot that of thematics, like you also sometimes need to be slightly counter-cyclical. Hmm. I mean, that's where it helps, right? Because sure. uh, we've seen that certain cycles okay, play out, and you are slightly ahead of that with certain framework, mm -hmm. then I think uh, that can be a good way of trying to generate some extra alpha uh, sure. in the market. And the best way is to play through a thematic fund, right? Mm -hmm. Because you identify a theme, instead of trying to pick up the stock, yeah. if you're able to just buy a particular fund or an index, I think you should uh, get the, uh, the the upside. Uh, you know, over speaking there speaking of thematics, would you be comfortable buying PSU stocks now? So that's again. Uh, I mean, again, that's done fantastically well. Right? I mean, we we have, we have one of the largest uh, fund there uh, on, on the PSU side, and uh, that's doing fantastically well. I would say at these levels, okay, looking at the past returns, I would be a bit cautious. Obviously, the outlook there, right, on the PSU stock is still good. Some of these stocks, if you look at whether it's the power sector, defence sector, I mean, we don't see any concern on the fundamental side. But just because the sharp run up, I think one would want advice to go slightly slow over there, and and don't expect again. Expectations also have to be managed, right? Yeah. People come with expectations, they'll get similar returns. And that's where the problem <laughs> comes in. I think, I think that, I think, is clearly behind over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Mahesh, uh, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, we have run out of time, not out of questions, but thank you uh, so much for being with us on the show. With that, it is a wrap on this edition of Editor's Roundtable. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend.